Today, sixth grade students, we're going to look at part two of three of European exploration. Today, we're going to look at uh, the European countries and their explorers. We're going to look at where the explorers began and where they ended. And remember, the uh, number one reason for European exploration is that they were searching for an all-water route from Europe to trade with China and India. Okay, so we're going to be talking today about the European exploration, and we're going to focus a lot on the explorers. This is standard 665 from South Carolina. So our learning objectives, uh, by the end of this, uh, I want you to be able to identify major uh, European explorers. And then also I want you to identify where they began their origin and what their destination was. So some essential vocabulary. If you look on the far right hand side of the screen, you'll notice it's circled in green. It's called the Orient, lands of the East. And this was kind of the goal of all the European explorers, is to find a route to the Orient, the lands of the East. Some other terms to know, if you'll notice uh, circled in green on the right-hand side of the slide, is what we call the Old World. This is the world that the Europeans already knew about. They knew about the continent of Africa and Asia and Europe. So we call this their Old World. Now, the New World wasn't brand new, but it was new to Europeans. So you'll notice what's circled in red. This is what they called the New World, North America and South America. And again, it was new to the people of Europe. They had not, um, had not discovered it before. So in some review, the incentives for European exploration, number one, it was economic, get wealth through trade that we called gold. Number two, was religious or the spread of Christianity that we call God. And third was political, which we call glory, finding that your country is number one or you're number one, so it's the glory for you and your country. So we're going to call this the Age of Discovery and also called European Exploration. You'll notice with the icon of a ship. So number one at the very top. Uh, again, this is about gold, God, and glory. Number two, we're going to focus on five specific countries, Portugal, Spain, England, France, and the Netherlands. Number three, again, the major purpose of this was that monarchs want to get wealthy through trade. So trade equals wealth. Number four, you had to have certain technology to explore the world. Number five, the main purpose was to find an all-water route to Asia. And number six, it is the discovery of what we call the new world, North America and South America. So the improved technology, number one, top right corner, the ship called the Caravel. It was able to sail closer to the shore. It had triangular sails so that it could sail into the wind. Number two, the invention of the rudder so you could steer your ships. Number three, learning of the compass from China, from China, one of the four great inventions of China. Number three is the astrolabe from Islamic Arab uh, traders, which allows you uh, to use your stars to find out your latitude north or south of the equator. And number five, the uh, improvement of maps. Uh, so three, four, and five are all navigational uh, devices. So the direct cause of European exploration was that the Europeans wanted to find an all-water route to the lands of the east, the Orient. The one they had at the present was the Silk Road. It was a long, ro long trade route, it was a dangerous route, and it was expensive. So Europeans were hoping to find an all-water route from Europe to China and bypass the Middle East. Hopefully it'll be quicker, hopefully it'll be cheaper, and hopefully it'll be less dangerous. So we're going to call this the Age of Discovery, and again we're going to look at five countries. Portugal, Spain, England, France, and the Netherlands. So starting with Portugal, they are the first to find an all-water route from Europe to India and China and lands of the East. So they're going to get the gold and the glory. The three uh, European explorers that we're going to look at are Prince Henry the Navigator, Bartolomeu Diaz, also called Bartholomew Diaz, and Vasco da Gama. First person we're looking at is Prince Henry the Navigator. He is the only one we're going to look at today that wasn't an actual sailor. Number one, he was a teacher. Number two, he created a school to teach explorers on how to 
navigate and how to sail. So he was more of a teacher who set up schools, and he was Portuguese. Then we look at two Portuguese explorers. The first one we're going to look at is here in orange on the left side of the map. His name is Bartolomeu Diaz, or also Bartholomew. You'll notice he leaves Portugal. He sails along the coast of Africa and gets to the tip of Africa, and he is given credit for the first one to round the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. Now, if you look at the one in green, his name is Vasco da Gama. This Portuguese explorer is the first one to actually find the all-water route to the lands of the east. So he follows Bartolomeu Diaz's map, but actually gets around the Cape of Good Hope and ends up in um, India. The next group of people we're going to look at is Spain. And Spain decides to sail west because they know the Portuguese control the all-water route around Africa, so they decide to sail west. And we're going to look at four Spanish explorers, Christopher Columbus, Ferdinand Magellan, Hernan Cortez, also known as Hernando Cortez, and Francisco Pizarro. So Christopher Columbus sails out from Spain, and, and Christopher Columbus is actually an Italian, but he sails for the Spanish flag, and he sails west and lands in the West Indies. So Christopher Columbus, again, was trying to find that all-water route and ends up discovering the West Indies. Our second Spanish explorer is Ferdinand Magellan. Ferdinand Magellan, again, sails west but goes farther south. And he is the first one given credit for circumnavigating the globe, which means his voyage went from Spain and went completely around the world. And again, he was looking for an all-water route from Spain to India and China. Now, unfortunately, Magellan does not complete his trip, and somewhere in the Philippines he is killed. But Magellan is given credit for the first person to circumnavigate the globe. Third Spanish explorer is Hernan Cortes, and he's also a conquistador. He sails from Spain and conquers the Aztecs and steals their gold. Fourth Spanish explorer is Francisco Pizarro. He again sails west, runs into Central America, and ends up in Peru and steals the gold from the Inca. Now we're going to move on to England. England, like Spain, decides to sail west to find a direct route to India and China. We're going to look at two explorers, Henry Hudson and John Cabot. For the so Henry Hudson leaves from England. He sails west looking for that all-water route to uh, China and India and Asia. And he ends up discovering Hudson Bay for the English and really explores the eastern seaboard or the eastern coast of what we call the United States and North America today. John Cabot also explores North America. And he really looks at, uh, again, the east coast of the United States. So he was a second English explorer, John Cabot. Now we're going to look at France. France decides to go farther north. And again, they're looking for that all-water route to India and China. We're going to look at one explorer. His name is La Salle. His full name is Sieur de La Salle, but most people just call him La Salle. La Salle sails from uh, France. He comes into the Americas. He sails through the Great Lakes. He sails down the Mississippi River and into the Gulf of Mexico. So these are the voyages of La Salle. And then we look at the Dutch. The Dutch, we really don't look at exploration, but they did set up colonies. And they set up in colonies in the current continents of North America, South America, Africa, and Asia. So that was our second of our three videos on European exploration. Uh, this one was about European explorers and looking at their destinations. Part three will be on what we call the Columbian Exchange.